auto safety advocate Joan Claybrook is president emeritus of Public Citizen. She's also a former NHTSA administrator. She joins us now from Washington outside the room where those hearings are taking place. Ms. Claybrook, welcome to Bloomberg News. Thank you so much. Ms. Claybrook, uh, Rhonda Smith giving some very powerful testimony today, and she did say today, shame on NHTSA for not doing your job. Is she right? I think she is. Uh, the agency has enormous authority and capacity, although it's grossly underfunded, uh, and uh, it really didn't use that. It listened to Toyota instead. Is this a question of the hearings are going to try to look into whether uh, Toyota resisted providing information about whether there was also a failure to regulate the company properly? I believe that's going to be one of the issues, definitely. Uh, the uh, chairman of the committee have sent a letter to both Toyota and to um, to NHTSA, and they've asked them for a lot of information. They've drawn some conclusions, and one of them is, is that the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration did not have the expertise, nor did it have the determination, essentially, to dig out this issue and to protect the public. But it seems as though uh, NHTSA officials have said that they did know about some of these issues a couple of years ago and that nothing sort of broadly was done at that point, uh, but could it have? Oh, definitely. Uh, they knew about the, the sudden acceleration issue, I would say, probably as early as 2004, maybe 2003, and yet they did not. Uh, when they started investigating, they got these great consumer complaints. People spelled out the problems that they'd experienced, and the agency looked into it, asked Toyota their opinion, and then closed uh, most of the investigations. Uh, Joan, there's been some talk um, in Washington that a lot of the uh, Congress people who are conducting the hearings have Toyota plants in their districts, have relationships with Toyota executives. From what you've seen of the hearings so far, do you believe that this is a, sort of a fair assessment of what Toyota and NHTSA did in response to this? I think it's been a fair assessment. Uh, understand that we've only heard now from uh, an engineer uh, who has believed that he has figured out at least part of what the electronic problem is in these uh, vehicles and the acceleration, and from a couple who experienced the problem. But uh, we haven't yet heard from Toyota. We haven't yet heard from um, the Department of Transportation. So, uh, but nevertheless, I think that the members have been very open and, and fair, and they've talked about their ownership of vehicles and whether they have a plant in their district and so on. So they've been pretty uh, transparent about it. You talk about hearing from Toyota, uh, Akio Toyota, uh, due to testify this week on Capitol Hill as well. And in his op-ed piece in the uh, Wall Street Journal, he said the past several months have been humbling for all of us at Toyota. We are taking this experience to heart. Uh, I was wondering if I might ask you, A, what uh, Toyota's responsibility will be for this going forward, and B, your assessment of how Akio Toyota has handled this. Well, I think that uh, his um, reluctance to come testify was understandable, but I think that it's really important that he be here. I think that a leader of any organization, particularly one, this is their largest market uh, in the world, that, in the United States, and they have serious problems. I think it's important for him to experience the whole process of uh, the way that we do business in the United States and try and find out these problems. So that, that I think that he's done well to come here. We'll see how well he handles the hearing and how well he handles the uh, answers to questions that he's going to get. Right. The key issue is what is he going to do going forward? Well, uh, well, and I hope that there are major changes in this company. One, one of the things that struck me during Rhonda Smith's testimony today and her husband as well, she said that when they tried to explain to Toyota what was going on or what specifically happened with her vehicle, that Toyota, in a sense, called them liars. Uh, well, that was totally unacceptable, and I hope that, that the company will revise its um, whole process for dealing with consumers, listening to consumers, taking what they have to say seriously. Um, we expect that in the United States. I don't know about Japan, but I think that, that because this company does so much business here, it's got to revise its procedures in terms of giving credibility to consumer complaints. I just want to quickly point out to our viewers, obviously, we're looking at a shot there of the hearings as they continue. Uh, Joan, are you optimistic at all that any changes to NHTSA will come out of these hearings as a, as a direct result? Oh, I am very confident that they will. First of all, there's new leadership at the agency. A new administrator just started in January. I think Secretary LaHood has been very tough since he became aware of this issue. And uh, I believe there'll be legislation coming out of this, which I hope 
will increase the agency's resources, number one. Number two, give them criminal authority so that if a company refuses to do a recall when they know willingly and knowfully know that there's a problem, that they uh, will have the possibility of going to jail. I think that'll change the way these executives deal with these issues. But, but won't it be tough to get more financial resources at a time of budget deficits uh, such as they are right now? Absolutely, but you know what? <laughs> this agency is so grossly underfunded that even a, a fly speck of money out of the federal budget will be a huge increase for this agency. All right, Joan Claybrook, uh, she's President Emeritus of Public Citizen, former NHTSA Administrator, now with Public Citizen. Ms. Claybrook, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it.